Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the Walders Mainline SD70ACE. Now we've looked at this before, but this time we've got these equipped with ESU Loc Sound inside. So we're going to take a listen and a look at the most recent run of SD70ACE MSRB 199.98. Let's see what you get in the box next. All right, we're going to unbox. The locomotive here. See what's inside. Well, there's mainline box, pretty nice. Inside, got styrofoam and plastic protection of the locomotive. And we will pull this out and take a closer look next. Inside the box you have a Walders Mainline ESU pamphlet here. Talks about the features of the ESU decoder, which has four lighting outputs, four horns, two bells. You got a prime mover, a start up and shutdown sequences, working dynamic brakes, and full throttle features, along with multiple lighting features and advanced consisting. And inside, a little cheat sheet for CVs and functions and how to reset the decoder and more information. You can even change to alternate horns and bells there. So you have that. And then the Walders mainline pamphlet as well, covering exploded parts. So you can coordinate parts that may be broken or missing to a number if you need to order them. Talks about other things as well, including performance and operation. Now, speaking of parts, the snowplow Came off when I was unboxing and just put it back on. It's plug and play. It has a little divot in there for plugging, so no big deal there. Let's get the foam removed and we'll take a closer look at the loco. Now the purpose of Walder's Mainline is to keep things budget friendly and allow modelers to be modelers and add parts like separately applied grab irons and detail parts. So you will not see a lot of detail on this and that's how you keep it budget friendly. So on the front, you do have sand filler hatches. You've got an LED headlight. Stanchions here with safety chain. High mounted ditch lights here, the anti-climber. Snow plow. Coupler with magnetic trip pin. The handrails are plastic. You got window sun shades. You do have interior cab detail. No cab figures are installed for those wanting to know or can't see from this angle. You've got the whole area on the side, which is still nicely done, with all this fan grating here, the dynamic brake area, and radiator fan area on the back here. Exhaust right here, you do have an exhaust area, uh, Canadian National, nice silver, blue, white print. You have fuel tank detail, including the sight glass, emergency shutoff valve. You've got jacking pad detail, a little hard to see with all that black. But if I zoom in a little bit, maybe it'll help you guys out there. You can see the jacking pad there. And still a very nice amount of truck detail on the locomotive. As we turn, you can see that fuel tank detail we just talked about. And more detail on the back trucks. Again, another jacking pad. Now we're at the radiator fan grills towards the back here. You do have fan grill detail up top as well. And even see-through to a certain extent fan grill detail here and here. As we turn the locomotive to the back, you see the number board. or number, cab number on the back, I'm sorry, and more separately applied detail with the stanchions and handrails. Got a separately applied brake wheel back here. And more detail, more of the same detail, like fuel tank detail, etc. As we work our way back up front. 
Now the ST70 ACE from Walters has multiple schemes. I'm showing you another scheme here so you can see some more detail. See a different scheme. The Ferromex scheme here, you can see a little better than the Canadian National. Some of the compartment detail on the sides. You've got that nice striped snow plow on the Ferromex scheme. As we turn over here, you can see the inset door on the ST70 ACE from Walters. So that's a little more inset than the rest of the mold. You can see more of that compartment detail even down here below the cab. Just a beautiful locomotive. Good deal from Walders because you can keep your budget happy and you can also add parts and pieces as you feel challenged and desire to do so to increase your modeling skills or if you're already a very experienced modeler it'll come as no problem for you to add parts and pieces on your own if you wish to do so. So ESU Loak Sound has a startup feature on F8 and it also shuts down. We'll go ahead and activate that now. We're going to go through some sounds, including the bell and horn here, after I check the headlight. All right, one is bell. Two is horn. You can change CV163 to get different horns. This is the standard Nathan K5HL. We've got a coupler crash. So as you can see from the side, the headlight is on. You can see the top headlight is what's illuminated. The bottom headlight housing is not illuminated. That's on both locomotives. The ditch lights are better seen in the dark when you turn them on with F6. So I'll show you a lights out look at the front of this locomotive here in a moment. But for now, let's actually move it and see how it operates out of the box. One of 126 is up first. Moving right along and very smoothly at that. Two. Three. Four. And five. Going reverse here. One. Two, three, four, and five. Some of you guys have asked for really fast speed, so I'll just kick this up real quick. Do the prime mover spin up. It's taken off towards that end of the layout. Taking it back down to zero, it does have momentum built in. You hear that brake squeal. And then it's coming back at us here. So with the slow speed control, very, very good. Let's take a look at lighting in the dark real quick. All right, the headlights obviously on. I'm going to hit the ditch lights. F6, you can see those. Those are a lot fainter than the headlight. There's a faint light coming out of the second housing of the headlight, but that's bleed through from the first top housing. I'm going to kill even more lights now. There you can see it in the very pitch dark. 
And like I said, headlight, pretty bright coming out of the top housing. Ditch lights, very faint in comparison coming out of the bottom housings. They are barely noticeable in complete daylight, noticeable in dark or shaded areas. Coupler height is good and MRA is standards are met on the coupler height and the wheel gauges. Do those off screen, but right now let's take a look at pull test on screen. Getting 4.2 ounces, which is over 60 regular sized freight cars. Pretty nice for the locomotive of this budget bracket. All right, we're gonna weigh the locomotive. You may even hear the other one still on the track in the back. That is one pound, 5.3 ounces. That's 21.3 ounces total, 605 grams. 0 0.605 kilograms. That is over a pound and a third. Very hefty locomotive. Well, that's going to do it from here in the basement on the review of the SD70 ACE from Walther's, this time equipped with ESU Loke Sound. I'm going to leave you with a run by of these two locomotives, let you see them in action a little bit on my layout, and we'll see you next time right here on my channel. Take care.